Okay, today we're going to be talking about how to do a two-step blood pressure. And the way we do a two-step blood pressure is we're kind of doing it twice, but we're doing it so that we prevent trauma by pumping up the blood pressure cuff too tightly. So first of all, Victoria's going to be my patient today. And I'm going to check and I'm going to make sure that her legs are not crossed because if your legs are crossed, that can give us a false high blood pressure reading. So I'm going to come in, I will wash my hands, identify my patient. Um, depending on where she is, she may or she may not have on a bracelet. So I would ask her her name and date of birth. And what we're going to do, Victoria, my name is Beth Clauber and I'm going to be taking your blood pressure this morning. Is that okay? And then I'm going to ask her if there's any reason why I shouldn't use one arm or the other. If my patient has an IV, if they have a dialysis shunt, if they've had a mastectomy on a certain side, I would not use that affected extremity. So do you have any of those? Is there any reason why I can't use your right arm? Actually, I think I'll use your left arm today. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I wanna always put the blood pressure cuff on and I wanna keep her arm at about the level of her heart. So if I've got it over the bed table, that would be really handy because I can have your arm and I can rest it here. So I'm gonna take my blood pressure cuff. You have to look at your cuff and make sure that you put it on properly um, to determine the proper size of your blood pressure cuff. They will give you some lines that will tell you when it goes around that the cuff should match up with that white line. Or you can hold the blood pressure cuff this way, put it against the arm, and the width of it should be one third to one half the diameter of the arm. If your blood pressure cuff is too small, your reading is gonna to be too high, you're gonna get a false high. If the blood pressure cuff is too big, you're gonna get a false low reading. So you wanna make sure that you have the right fit. So I think this one is gonna be a good size for my patient. And so I'm gonna look for the artery mark. Sometimes it looks like a bullseye. And I'm gonna line that up with her brachial pulse, which is gonna be on the pinky side at the bend of her arm. And it's right there. So that's where I'm gonna put my cuff. You want the cuff to be about an inch to two inches above the bend in the arm. And I want to make sure that I get a good snug fit. Now, you have to make sure that you have your valve closed properly. Um, some people say righty tighty, lefty loosey. So that would be to the right and that would be to the left. I would encourage you to hold the bulb in your dominant hand so that you can control the valve, screw valve, by closing it that way, closing it away from you. Now, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pull up a chair just because I have one right here, and I'm gonna be looking at the manometer. And the manometer, you need to remember that it's in increments of two millimeters of mercury, so you will not come up with an odd number like 63 or 108, nine. You want it always gonna be 82, 84, 86. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna palpate her, her radial pulse, and she's got a nice, good, strong pulse there. And so I'm gonna palpate it, and I'm gonna close the screw valve on my bulb, and I'm gonna pump it up. I'm gonna pump it up gently until I can no longer feel <coughs> Her pulse because the cuff will occlude that blood flow. So at about 120, I don't feel that pulse anymore. So I'm going to pump it up 30 millimeters of mercury above that, so about to 150. Then I'm going to very slowly let the air out of the valve, and I'm going to be watching the manometer, and I'm going to be waiting for the return of that pulse. Okay, right there about 110, I actually felt that pulse return. So I'm gonna go ahead and let the rest of the air out. So when I pumped it up, 
I pumped it up and I felt the pulse go away at about 120. So you pump it up 30 above that, which would be 150. And as the air slowly comes out, after I loosen that screw valve just a tiny bit, you're gonna wait, 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 and I'm palpating to see when that pulse returns. Hers returned about 110. So that means that 110 is the palpated systolic blood pressure. Now I'm gonna do the actual blood pressure with my stethoscope. So I'm gonna put my stethoscope in my ears and I'm gonna put the diaphragm of my stethoscope right over that brachial pulse that I palpated earlier. And my palpated systolic pressure was 110. So now I'm gonna pump it up about 30 above that because that gives you a little wiggle room with letting the air out of your screw valve. When you're letting the air out of the bulb, you wanna make sure that this line goes down one to two lines per second, which is two to three millimeters of mercury per second. So you're gonna really have to practice to get that flow right. If it goes too fast, you're gonna miss your systolic pressure. And if it goes too slow, then the needle can kind of get stuck and just bounce in one place. So I'm gonna pump it up to about 140. I'm gonna slowly let the air out, one to two lines per second. And I'm gonna listen for that first pulse. There, bump, 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 bump. I'm gonna keep listening till I no longer feel a pulse. I no longer hear it. So I'm gonna go ahead and let the rest of the air out. So now I'm gonna look at the manometer and I'm gonna look back to where I first heard that sound appear and I heard it at 114. So when I was up here, I didn't hear anything. It was quiet, 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 quiet. And then I hear boom, 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 boom as the needle goes down. The last time I heard the needle was right at 66. So my systolic pressure would have been 116 and my diastolic would have been 66. So that is your blood pressure. Is that about normal for you? Yep. Okay, very good. Sometimes you can ask the patient and they have an idea of what their pressure is and sometimes they really don't know. Um, but doing the two step gives you a more accurate reading and keeps you from traumatizing the arm by pumping it up too high. So I hope that helps.